Alright, welcome everyone. This is the Larkinville Criterium. It was, uh, so this was the June 1st um, Cat123 Larkinville Criterium. And we're going to start out with taking you through a full lap. I gotta say, this is a really nice course. This is the first time, first time I did Larkinville, and also my first ever Cat 123 race. And I'm a, I'm currently sitting as a Cat 3. It was surprisingly tame, and people are right when they say when you go up in categories, the bike handling skills get better, and the comfort level at various races get better. So that was turn one and two. In most of these turns, you could you know, keep your speed up and uh, almost pedal through the turns. I'm at this back stretch, depending on where you were in the race, you can kind of get a breather. It's a little stretched out right now because things are starting pretty fast. But you'll see as the race goes on, it bunches up quite a bit. Turn three. This one, you know, like I said, you could pedal through it if you wanted to, if you took it wide enough. Big old potholes on this road, though. Not too, too good of a road. Turn four, again, large, wide, sweeping. Coming into the home stretch. Rear view camera set up as well in the upper right. Recorded on a two... GoPros at 1080p at 30 frames per second and there's the start finish line right there so we'll skip ahead a little bit and I'll talk about some sort of a, some race tactics and some things to keep in mind this is early on in the race where there's a couple guys kind of up front you can see them right there in the distance and I basically this is like three or four laps into the race I basically want to stretch my legs and test them out a little bit so I bridge the gap you can see in the review camera one guy's following me, quite a gap opening up, and pretty, and I keep my momentum going and just blow past these guys. But needless to say, this, this attack didn't stick. This guy coming up behind me, you can see my rear view camera coming up to my left. He was strong, super strong. And you could hear probably a little bit later where I say that I have nothing left and uh, listen to what he says. I got nothing left, sorry. I got nothing. Red line. I won't. So this is where the group comes back together. And see how they sweep across my front wheel? I don't like that. I think that's, I don't know. I guess it's part of racing, but you know, you do it wrong, you could take someone's front wheel out and that's the end of the race. So now everyone kind of sits up and relaxes and the attacks come on the far left side. It wasn't really a big deal. You can hear the squealing tires in the back. People coming up fast. This guy in the legacy kit and the red bike, I believe he won, 131. He won this race. I had one teammate in this race, Tim Paul. He has an orange, a bright orange helmet, and I'll try to point him out as we go. I think the, one of the leader, the leader of this race in my rear, in my rear camera was uh, right back there in the blue kit was uh, Corey Coons. So one thing that I'm trying to work on uh, as I race more is cornering. You can see I start pretty close to my the rider in front of me, and then I and, and then I. There's a, a gap opens up because I'm not quite comfortable enough with cornering at speed, and uh, it just it just burns extra energy to get up to speed. So various points throughout the race, the pack really slowed, yeah, really slowed down to like the low 20s, and it was frustrating not to keep your momentum going and having to push a higher wattage to get your speed up. But uh, here we're looking at just making up a few spots. Again, the, the pack is bunched up. This is where you want to make up a few spots up the side. 
This is See this gap that opened up behind me? That probably isn't, you know, we want to minimize that as best as possible. So here, making up a few spots. See this kid behind me? I want to highlight this kid right behind me who jumps on my wheel. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want to do. I'm doing all the work, and he's just sitting on, getting a free ride to the, to the front, and that's a real good move on his part. So now I went from basically 30th to, to third wheel because everyone's sat up. Everyone's not working very hard, so that's where you got to make up the spots. So here's a counterattack coming. And one of my problems with counterattacks is I don't get back up to speed so that I'm sitting, let's say, 10th wheel. If I got up to speed, I could sit 10th wheel right now. But instead, I'm getting a breather, and I sink back from basically 3rd wheel to 30th. And I need to work on that. There's Tim Paul in the orange kit there. Number 171. What do we got here? Yeah, so they're trying to sweep across to get on someone's wheel. This guy, 183, it's kind of part of racing. But you got to communicate with people who uh, who are going to hit you. You got to bark at them sometimes. No hard feelings. So this was, uh, you know, trying to get on this guy's wheel to have him drag me up to the front, and it worked. This guy worked really hard for some reason. I'm, I'm not really sure if he had teammates or not, but he did a good job pulling me up to the breakaway group. And see again, I, that gap opens up between me and him. It's just because I'm not, I'm not 100% comfortable at, at cornering at speed. So here's a good example of me coming back up to speed after getting passed by the first eight or ten riders. So now I'm back up to speed. I'm sitting eighth or tenth wheel, which is what you want. Um, you don't want to be doing all the work at the front, but uh, this is a good spot to be. Cornering at speed. That one was decent, but still. So, here, communication between riders is important. I basically say to this guy, hey, can you move over? Give me some room on the curb side to let me pass. There you go. You know, you want to try to make, you want to make friends in the peloton, not enemies. And just even being polite during a race, even though you're trying to compete against these guys, goes a long way. And I believe here pretty soon we're going to be coming up on two laps to go. So again, making up a few spots where I can. So watch this coming up. Watch this guy coming up on my left. He's going to push me into the curb. Listen. Right there. I think he just lost control of his bike a little bit. He tried to stand up. And yeah. <laughs> it's so here I'm trying to get... Uh, some see Tim in my rearview camera right there in the orange helmet. He's my teammate. We're two laps to go. And in retrospect, this was too, too little too late. I'm trying to move him up from 30th... From basically 30th to third wheel. And... This was kind of a dangerous move where I cut to the inside. This wasn't a good line, but luckily Corey Coons to my right is a good bike handler and uh, and no hard feelings, but that probably was a dangerous move. Again, too little too late. I'm trying to make up too much uh, ground in too little amount of time. But again, this is we are on the second to last lap. So everything's getting a little faster. There's Tim right in front of me now. Everyone's trying to find a wheel, trying to save up as much energy as possible. And I knew coming in that I was trying to help Tim out, do as best as possible. So here's a mistake on my part where, you know, I could tell things were getting more heated, things were getting faster, things were getting a little bit twitchy in the peloton, so I just sunk back. And again, I was I was sitting around 10th, and now I'm sitting 30th. And it, it happens that fast in, in 10 seconds. But, uh... So again, when last lap comes around, I just try to do too much too soon and um, couldn't really pull off a good finish, but uh, 
It's my first Larkinville, and we're going to be competing in two more, so I'm excited about those. So here comes the bell lap. Trying to get on someone's wheel. I call out Tim's name again on the back stretch. Here's Tim right in front of me. There's a bell. Last lap, everything's getting a lot faster. Should get a little closer to Tim's wheel so I'm sitting on someone's wheel although at this point I was trying to find an opening either the, to the inside or the outside and here we go here I'm trying to get Tim up and this was again just too little too late I'm kind of shaking my head getting all the Tim get on my wheel Tim so I can move you up so it did work for him pretty well I, I gotta say and he even said afterwards it worked well because it moved him up he's like I had more in the tank after you led me up Listen to the guy on the right here who's not going to let me in on the inside. You're not getting inside. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was that guy in that the, the, the red on his legs there in the kit. So there's Tim right in front of me who just moved up, and he finished decent. And I was pretty tired at this point. I just sort of let up a little bit. But uh, I learned a lot from this race. This was a good race. I'm going to be back for two more. I'm not really sure how I finished. I'm not really bothering to look it up on USA Cycling. But, yeah, good race. I really enjoyed it. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about Criterium tips, racing, feel free to uh, post them down below in the comments. Thanks so much.